All right, so you guys are gonna hear this here first, a black gay comic geek exclusive. Ignore what anybody else might tell you, but this movie, Book of Clarence, is an X-Men prequel. For those of you that seen it, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. And welcome to my safe game and everybody. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and joining me here on the Black Gay Comic Geek channel. Let me introduce myself. My name is Michael. I call myself the Black Gay Comic Geek and I always say the things that I love to talk about on my channel has blood, sex, gore, and magic or any variation of the four. So I mostly like to talk about superheroes, nerd stuff, fantasies, horror. And of course I like to talk about black representation and queer representation. So do me a favor. If that's something that you're interested in, hit that subscribe button, become one of my safe gay veneers. Also, hit the like button, it'll help with the YouTube algorithm, getting this video out there, getting my channel out there, so I can continue to grow. But guys, we're here to talk about Book of Clarence. I actually got to see Book of Clarence last week with Fantastic Frankie, so let's get into the movie, shall we? So just a quick FYI, this video is going to be a little bit different than my normal reviews, because for whatever reason, the audio captured, but not the video. And I'm not re-recording this, so you're going to hear me, but you're not going to see me. So still watch, like, share, comment, interact for the all-gay rhythm. Starring Lakeith Stanfield. It has a lot of stars in here. A lot of black stars. It's got Lakeith Stanfield. It's got uh, Anna Diop, uh, James McAvoy. Um, what's the guys? RJ Style? Like a bunch of black faces and a bunch of some of your favorite black faces in uh, Hollywood in this movie. And the movie is directed by James Samuels who did the Netflix movie, The Harder They Fall, which also starred Lakeith Stanfield. And I really like that movie, The Harder They Fall. The synopsis for Book of Clarence is, a down on his luck man struggles to find a better life for his family while fighting to free himself of debt. Captivated by the power and glory of the rising Messiah, Jesus Christ himself, he risks everything to carve his own path to a divine life, ultimately discovering that the redemptive power of belief may be his only way out. And so like I said, this movie has some beautiful black, dark skin, brown faces in it. Lakeith Stanfield, uh, uh, Alfre Woodard is in this movie, Omar Sy is in this movie, Caleb um, McLaughlin from uh, Stranger Things is in this movie, Tiana Taylor is in this movie, David Oyelowo, and just like I mentioned in the synopsis, this movie takes place during the time of Jesus, and what makes this interesting is the movie is populated by a mostly black cast, and even though historically so, it's the way this movie looked is probably more accurate to how it actually was back then, but in terms of movie depictions, you don't really get to see us that much in historical, like you think about the movies Cleopatra, like who starred as Cleopatra? Elizabeth Taylor. Nine times out of 10, who do you see starring as Egyptian pharaohs? White people. And so it was refreshing to see a tale about Jesus where it was populated by mostly black people. You got to see Jesus was played by a black actor. And like I said, it was more probably more accurate to the time because also Jesus spent time in Africa. So I enjoyed seeing that. I enjoyed seeing the set design. And honestly, like the way this movie looked, the cinematography, the, the, the costumes, all of that, the production design, all of that was gorgeous. All of that was incredible. Like they put some money into this movie, especially with like Jay-Z being the producer. Like they definitely put some money into this movie. You could tell just in how beautiful the movie looked. and and the lighting design, like all of it just looked incredible. And I've always been a fan of Lakeith Stanfield. Some people feel like he plays the same role over and over again, but that might be true here and there, but at least what he plays, cause I feel like, let's be perfectly honest, Denzel is playing Denzel in almost every movie that he does, but he does a great, a great job doing and playing Denzel. Samuel L. Jackson plays Samuel L. Jackson, a variation of Samuel L. Jackson, and virtually every movie that he does, but he does a great job playing Samuel L. Jackson. I feel the same thing with Lakeith Stanfield. For the most part, every time I see him, he's in the same type of role, but he's good. Like, uh, I remember when I watched him in the movie Haunted Mansion, which that movie should have made more money than it did, but he had me crying in that movie. Now granted, something about him in his personal life strikes me as he might be somewhat homophobic, but that's just me. I don't know that for a fact, so I can't base my actual feelings for him off of just speculation, because he might not be. I don't know. But something strikes me as that, but until I hear otherwise, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, as an actor, I like him. But 
with that said, despite like enjoying the actors for this movie, uh, enjoying the costumes, the set design and all of that other stuff. And I'll get to the X-Men portion later, like what I mentioned in the intro. But in some ways I can't figure out if I liked this movie or I didn't like this movie because I couldn't figure out what this movie was about and who this movie was for. And I feel like the tone was all over the place in a certain sense. And the reason I say that is because I'm like, being that this movie takes place during the time of Jesus and Book of, and Book of Clarence, Clarence played by Lakeith Stanfield, he's pretending to be another Messiah during the reign of Jesus. He's going around doing miracles and pre or pretending to do miracles and scamming people and basically trying to lift his name up to try to get himself out of poverty. I was just like, so is this movie making fun of religion or not? Is this movie trying to tell you Jesus is real and you should pray to the Messiah or not? Like, I couldn't tell what this movie was trying to do. And then, like, this movie play because you know in the uh bible i was about to say in the comics i'm pretty sure jesus exists in some comics but in the bible jesus was prosecuted by the romans and in this movie pretty much all of the romans were played by white people and so they did some parallels in terms of like the black lives matter movement in terms of like since the majority of the cast was black but then you had the romans going after people especially somebody like clarence who was pretending to be the messiah and they're going after messiahs so you had the Romans going after Clarence and it was very, very, and it wasn't subtle. It was very in your face with like the Black Lives Matter allegories and what they were trying to tell. But then the same thing with religion. I'm like, are they trying to make fun of Black Lives Matter or are they not? Like, again, it just felt all over the place for me. But I was interested in the story. I was interested in Clarence's life and how he was going to try to pretend to be the Messiah and cure the blind, heal the sick, raise the dead. Like, that was interesting. And like I said, the actors were good. The actors were great. But it's just the message of the movie. I was just like, I, I just, what is this movie? Now, getting into the X-Men portion of the movie and why I said this movie was basically an X-Men movie. This, base, this movie was pretty much an X-Men prequel. So because it takes place during the reign of Jesus and you know, if you think about the Bible, and this is also why I said, are they trying to say religion is real or God is real or are they trying to make fun of it? But you saw Jesus in this movie and like Jean Grey with her power of telekinesis, Jesus was manipulating and levitating rocks throughout the movie. You had characters and I guess slight spoilers, but, and I'm not going to give like full details, but you had characters that weren't Jesus walking on water. You had another character who his whole shtick throughout the movie was he's immortal. And throughout the movie, you're thinking like, he's not telling the truth. He's just putting on bravado. He's just putting on a front because he's a tough guy. He's a fighter. But then you get to a certain part of the movie and this man is stabbed multiple times through the movie, once through the heart. And... He walks away perfectly fine. And the next time you see him, he is 100% healed. So you're just like, oh, so he actually is immortal. And they kind of throw a reference to like Achilles heel where it's like, he's like, the only way you could kill him is if you hit a certain spot in his heel. But his name wasn't Achilles, but it was basically the same premise. You actually had characters coming back from the dead and healing from wounds and all this other stuff. Like again, it was an X-Men movie. And I said this on TikTok, but I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if we find out that this movie was Apocalypse's origin story. Jesus was Apocalypse. He tried to bring the world together just like Xavier, but then because of what happened to Jesus, and then also not even just that, but let me throw this in there. It's so much an X-Men movie, like I just mentioned, James McAvoy, Charles Xavier himself, is in this movie playing Pontius Pilate. And so Magneto, I mean, or Apocalypse started out like Xavier. He wanted the world to coexist with mutants, but because of what they did to him, now he's like, no, the, the strongest survive. I'm all about mutant supremacy. I'm telling, I'm like, it may, if you act, like, if you see this movie and you, and, and I say that, you're just like, that actually kind of, that actually kind of makes sense and that might work. And not only just that, but like, this movie was so much so an X-Men movie, but you, that you literally had a character in the movie with Wolverine-like claws on his hand as a club, as a glove. And I was just like, I leaned over to Frankie, I'm just like, like the whole time I was saying this is an X-Men movie, but I was joking. But then when that Wolverine character showed up, I was just like, are you serious? Are you serious? This is an X-Men movie. <laughs> but despite me saying like, I don't know how I feel about this movie. I don't know if I like this movie. I would still recommend people check it out. 
Because it's definitely a conversation starter. I'll say that much. Because like I said, I don't know. Like, are they making, especially for like people that are super religious, I would like your opinion. Because I'm like, are they making fun of religion or are they not? Because I don't know what they're doing with this movie, especially when it comes to the narrative of Jesus. Like, honestly, to be perfectly honest, and again, slight spoilers, but a lot of the things that happened to Jesus didn't happen to Jesus in this movie. They happened to other characters. So I'm just like, what story are you trying to tell in this? Like, I'm confused. But with that said, were you? You confused while you watch this movie for those of you that have seen it what did you think about book of clarence let me know your thoughts in the comment section below also if you haven't seen book of clarence or you may be more interested in seeing it after this review let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below also if you can hit that like button it'll really help with the youtube algorithm if this is one of your first time checking out one of my videos please check out the other videos on my channel if you like what you see please subscribe for more and hit that bell notification button so you're alerted every single time i post a new video I'll tell your friends families and neighbors about my channel to help me continue to grow